Hello again, everyone. My name is James Shotwell. This is the Music Biz channel, and we need to talk because I'm going to be honest with you, I'm pretty frustrated. For the last several years, I've been making videos here at Music Biz, and I was writing about how to make it in the music industry long before that. And of course, there are dozens of authors and industry professionals who came before me, each spouting advice, and yet some of the most common mistakes that have been plaguing artists trying to establish themselves for years are still happening in 2021. It's almost maddening to think that we've made it this far and people still haven't learned the basics of music promotion. So today, I'm gonna to tell you the most unforgivable acts of bad music promotion that are still happening today and how you can avoid them. So let's just get into it. Let's start at the biggest mistake people make, and that is not understanding your audience. Every week, I get messages from artists who fall so far beyond the range of things I've covered, not just currently, but in the history of my career, that it tells me so much about that musician that I know right up front, I'm never gonna work with them. Because it's not just that you don't know what it is I do and you think that I wanna cover what it is you do. It's that you're disrespecting me by still reaching out to me because you don't know who I am, you don't know what I cover, you don't have an appreciation for the work that I'm actually doing. You just expect me to do a little dance and help you make content, help you you get your name out there, but you're not mutually respecting me by understanding what it is I do and what it is I put out there. So right off the top, you need to know your audience. If you're a rap artist, you shouldn't be emailing Metal Injection to cover your new song unless it's some kind of rap metal hybrid. Vice versa, if you're a death metal band, you don't need to be emailing Rap Radar trying to get on their radar because that's not something that they cover. And if you're just blanket emailing thousands of press people at once, it's not gonna take long for people to figure out that you don't actually know anybody in this industry. Because if you did, you wouldn't be asking people who work in folk music about your new Glitch Pop EP. It's just, it's just bad professionalism. It's just bad show and it's an immediate way to make sure you never get anywhere. Now let's take this idea one step further. Not only are there bands out there today who are writing people that don't cover or have anything to do with the style of music that they work with, but they're writing those people and they don't even know their names. This week alone, it's only Wednesday when I'm making this clip, but this week alone, I've gotten emails calling me everything from John to Jimmy to Sean, Meredith, Patrick, Bethany, and my real name, James. It's always James. I, I would accept a Jamie. I don't like to be called Jamie, but I've been called everything in the book. And sometimes I'm just called, hey, media outlet or hey, journalist. And none of those things resonate with me because again, you're disrespecting me as not only a journalist, but as an industry professional. You're saying, you don't really matter. I just need to use you for the thing that I want, which is free promotion or cheap promotion or whatever that happens to be. So if you're out there trying to make a name for yourself, know who you're writing to. Use their name, use their correct name, use the correct pronouns, talk to people as if they are human beings and not just tools for your own promotion. And you'll be surprised at how far that gets you. The third common mistake is that people are still sending downloads to complete strangers who know absolutely nothing about their music. Now, getting me to click on your email as an unknown artist is already an uphill battle. I receive more than 500 emails every single week to my promotions inbox where I get songs that I cover and artists that I interview. That inbox, 500 emails a week, so about 100 emails a day during the weekdays. Your email is one of hundreds that is trying to get me to click on it and then listen to whatever is inside of it and hopefully take that extra step and create content out of the thing that's within it. If I click on that email, which is already highly unlikely, you're already in the higher echelon of artists that might actually get coverage. And the first thing I see is a link to download your new album, but no links to stream it or watch a music video or you know experience it at all without putting the entire thing on my desktop. That's a red flag. I'm gonna delete that, it's gonna to go to my trash and I will never think about that email ever again other than to say, holy crap, can you believe somebody sent me a blind download link in the year 2021? That's just absolutely unheard of. And it's even worse if you use a download company I've never heard of. I think that we can all agree that there are like three or four that we all use, Dropbox, Google, Google Drive, uh, maybe one of the upload sites, but anything uh, like WeTransfer, but anything beyond that, if I don't know what it is, that's only giving me more reason not to click on the thing that you've sent me. So moving forward, use services that people know and make sure that you give them a stream of your music or a video. Don't expect people to download something that you've sent them as a complete stranger. That's just bad business. 
The fourth mistake I continually encounter with new artists, even in 2021, is people believing that they need to pay for exposure in the music industry. Let me tell you what I mean. There's an artist that was emailing me earlier this week. They watched some of the videos we made on this channel about scams, how people will fake an email to you saying they represent a big record label, and that if you just give them 200, 300, 400, maybe $500, that they will give you access to their entire A&R team and they'll help establish you as a career. Almost saying like, give us a little bit of money and we'll give you a lot more money in order to make sure that you're serious about a career in music. And while on some level I understand why people buy into that, it's crap. No major label, Universal, Warner Music Group, even the major indies like Hopeless, Epitaph, Fearless, none of these labels recruit artists by asking artists to first give them money. That is a lie. And people buy into it every single week. I mean, the person I told you about in this clip, the one that emailed me earlier this week about having this issue, they had received similar emails from five different fake record labels, all asking for a small amount of money in exchange for major exposure because of the success of their new single on some streaming platform. And while it's always good to feel wanted, it's so, so important that you look through these quote unquote offers seriously. If there's a phone number, call it. If there's a person's name attached to it, Google that person and then reply to them and ask for a phone call. Never ever under any circumstances should you be giving anyone money in exchange for the promise of a record deal, a booking deal, or exposure for your music. And along these same lines, if you see an Instagram ad for something promising you guaranteed playlist placement, same rules apply. Don't do it. This next one is almost hilarious if it wasn't so frustrating. I had an artist this week send me an invitation on LinkedIn. And I don't mean like a solo artist, like Matthew Fuller, a singer-songwriter, also a development tech. No, I mean a band called something, 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 I won't say their name here, but a band, a group of people sent me a LinkedIn invitation to their account. And when I clicked on it, their uh, employment experience was just that they were in this band together. And it was the weirdest, most surreal, most unnecessary thing I think I've ever seen in my career as a music professional. There is no reason for a group of musicians <laughs> to have a LinkedIn page. I don't even know if a solo musician really needs one unless they're trying to get their day job off the ground, but LinkedIn just isn't the place for that. And in a similar sense, neither are my DMs. Artists are reaching out to me on my Instagram DMs asking me if I want to go to Bandcamp to listen to their music that I've never heard before because they sound like an artist they read I wrote about somewhere else on the internet. That's, that's way too much going on. Stay out of my DMs, stay out of my LinkedIn account. If you want to get a hold of me, the same paths that have worked forever work for everyone else. You want to hit their inbox, you can always call if they have a phone number readily available, but again, Go to that inbox first. You could attempt to meet them at some kind of networking event. You can attempt to get their attention through some kind of clever marketing approach, but never under any circumstances do you wanna try to push your music down someone's throat in a place where they're not expecting to have any music promotion thrown at them. I understand the thinking. You'll catch them off guard and they'll have no excuse but to pay attention to what you're doing. But that's not what happens. If I'm not in the headspace where I'm expecting to hear from an artist who wants me to check out their music and somebody approaches me, my brain just shuts off. I don't have any interest in doing that because I, that's what I do as a profession for my work and there are, there are ways that I do that. There's a, there's a proper path, there's proper procedures for how to you know, make yourself known. And when you start to try to circumvent those by cheating the system, you run the risk of just annoying people and, and that's not gonna get you very far. And finally, this one is uh, maybe a little bit more of a personal preference, but it, it's becoming a growing concern. More and more artists are trying to get themselves out there. And so the amount of names available on social media, I understand can be kind of slim at times, depending on what you want to call yourself. But whenever possible, I think every artist should be attempting to have a unified social handle. Let me give you an example. I host a podcast about addiction in the music industry. It's called High Notes. If you want to find us online, you look up High Notes Pod. That's High Notes P-O-D. It's the same handle on Twitter and on Instagram, and we don't have a Facebook page, but we do hold the Facebook page, which is also High Notes Pod. The idea here is that if I'm looking up your band and I can figure out one of your handles, I'll be able to find you everywhere you are online. And what I keep encountering, especially with younger artists who have yet to establish themselves, is that they might be called one thing on Instagram and something else on Twitter and something else on Facebook and the handles are all different and the extensions are all different and learning anything about the group becomes exponentially more difficult. It should be seamless. I should be able to type in your band's name and the city where you're from or the label that you're on or the name of your latest song 
and Google should just populate with all that information. Or if I'm on Twitter, I should be able to type in your name or type in your name plus music or official or band and it should come up right away. But if you have different handles for everything, it just makes it harder to find you. And, and that's, again, just bad professionalism. Having a unified vision is important, not just in your songwriting and in your branding and in your aesthetic, but also in how you sell yourself online. Where do I find you on the internet? The more URLs I need to remember, the harder it gets. But if it's just one handle, at Fallout Boy, for example, that's easy. It's easy to remember, it's easy to find, and it's more likely that I will check you out. So if you have yet to do so, take some time this week and figure out how you can make a unified handle. It might require changing some of your existing handles, but in the long run, you'll be better for it. Now that's like half a dozen things, and trust me, there are more, but I don't want this video to go on for too long. But let me, let me make this as simple as possible. If you are an artist trying to make a name for yourself today, the things that worked 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago, by and large, still work today. Now they have evolved. Phone calls have been replaced with emails. Uh, press kits have been replaced with digital press kits. But the basic nuts and bolts of how this industry operates remain largely the same, which means the people that find success, even though they have to find their own route to success, they more or less follow a specific pattern. They start locally, they move regionally, they move even farther out, and eventually they become a global sensation. It all starts at the beginning, and that's where you are in your career right now. And if you want to get ahead, avoiding everything I've said in this video is a great way to do that. You need to make yourself easy to find online. Your music should also be easy to find online. You need to be professional at all times. Know who you're talking to, address them by name, and don't bother people who have nothing to do with the thing that you're trying to accomplish. And above all else, treat people like human beings. They are not tools for your promotional needs. They are not levers to be pulled to enact something to benefit solely you. Everything they do will either positively or negatively impact them as well, and you need to consider that. Because when people know that you are considering them and anything that you ask for, they are more willing to help you as a result. That's how relationships work. And I think, especially in 2021, when we're all spread out by this pandemic and the digital age and whatever else, relationships matter more than ever. And if you need help on figuring out how to build those relationships or how to network or how to do anything else related to succeeding in the music industry, that's why this channel exists. Music Biz is here to help you become a music professional. We wanna create a better, more welcoming, more accessible industry for everybody and you play a role in making that happen. So if you haven't done so already, click the subscribe button down below. And if you have, you have my sincerest thanks. I'll be back real soon, I promise. I know it's been weird lately, but I will be back soon. And until next time, take care of yourself because you deserve it.